teachers have read it. What is the most ridiculous excuse for unfinished homework that you've ever heard? The student claimed he put it in a room in his house. He then forgot the room existed. He was at a loss to explain where his homework was. He was upset to think he must have imagined doing it. He apologized to me. The next week, to his amazement, he found the room, and more amazingly, he found his homework. He handed it in that week. Now, this may seem like nonsense, but it turns out he had an operation to remove a tumor from his brain when he was 10. One of the outcomes was a strange side effect that for a short period he could utterly forget a room or more in his house. True story, confirmed from his mother and sister. Story 2. Taught instrumental music down in South Texas, so I basically never gave any sort of homework outside of practicing. 6th grade. I gave the kiddos a super basic theory sheet to complete that was due back in two days, since I had a dentist appointment the next day. When I'm collecting the sheets, a trombone kid tells me, my grandma stole my homework in Mexico and wouldn't give it back. Turns out, they were visiting his grandparents over the border outside Matamoros, and his grandma really wanted something of his to hang on her refrigerator. So she took her homework he had just finished and put it up. Kid protested, but she wouldn't relent. So he snapped a pic as proof. Graded the sheet from the picture. Kid got an A. I got a story. Story 3. Been a teacher for two months, with a lot of submissions being online due to COVID protocol. I've had the following exchange with many, many students. Hey, why didn't you submit the online homework I set? I emailed it to you. It must not have come through. That's unfortunate. Would you mind emailing it to me again before the end of the day? I can't. I didn't save the work. If you didn't save your file, how did you try to email it to me in the first place? No, er, I meant I deleted the file after I completed the work. I didn't think I would need it anymore. Well, in the future, avoid doing that, at least until you have confirmation that I have it. Either way, you should be able to find it in your sent email. Assuming you attached it, it should still be there. Physically panicking. Er, I deleted my sent emails too. Wow, you're incredibly efficient. Well, unfortunately, I can't grade you on your work unless I receive it. Seeing as you've already done it before, at least doing it a second time should be a breeze. Rinse and repeat. I'm a dude in my 20s, first year out of uni. Do they really think I'm that technologically dense? Story 4. Not a teacher, but we had a report due, and I waited until the last minute, like always. I slept through class mostly, and one day I was abruptly woken up and asked for my report, and I said, half asleep, I didn't do it because my mom died. The teacher was disgusted that I would say something so cruel and sent me to the principal's office. The teacher was called into the principal's office after they found out I wasn't joking and was so apologetic. I wasn't trying to be a jerk about it. I was just tired. Story 5. I did the homework the day you gave it to us, which is one week ago, except that I did it in an old, rough copy of mine, and yesterday, when I got back to school, Dad sold all our stationaries for petty cash. I was so mad at my dad, I didn't do my homework to teach him a lesson. Could you please call home and tell him about this? I couldn't help but laugh. Edit. I called home and told his dad to get him a chess set, because this guy can think. Story 6. One kid told me his pet parrot flew onto the fireplace and caught on fire. It then proceeded to fly around the sitting room, and the dad tried to hit it with a frying pan because he was afraid the curtains would go up in flames if the parrot went close to them. The dad hit it onto the kitchen and then grabbed it and threw it under a tap, because you have to throw a parrot under a tap if it's on fire. He then said with all the drama, he'd forgotten to do his homework. Of course I let him off because it was the most creative story he'd come up with all year. Edit. This blew up, so I'll tell another story from the class. I work in an amazing and very challenging school. I'm constantly exhausted, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Anyway, I'm covering lunch one day and the kids are playing outside. One of them runs up to me and is really distressed. Exit a bad word, sir. Exit a really bad word. So I called X up to explain. What did you say? Nothing. First child again. He told me that if I drink milk, I'm basically drinking from my mother's tits. In her monologue. Oh, Christ. How am I going to deal with this one? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay, what did you say? I said that if you drink milk, you're basically drinking from a cow's mother's tits. In her monologue. F. Kid's got me on a technicality and he knows it. Don't let him know you're scrambling here. Are you allowed to speak like that in this school? But it's true! Inner monologue. I haven't been trained for this. The child's correct, but also needs to be punished. God damn you, X. The child is smiling. Language like that is not permitted in this school and you know it. What? Tits? Uh, yes. Yes, you're not allowed to say that. Now apologize to Y for saying it to him. Sorry for saying tits. Y. It's okay, X. 
And they ran off happy. I've no idea if what I did was the correct way to handle it, and I don't care. I'm just glad I didn't laugh until I hit the staff room. Story 7. My senior year in high school, I was doing a project with another kid in my class. The day it was due, he was walking to school with it, and he got hit by a car and died. It was terribly sad, and it was big news. The next day, the teacher asked where my project board was, and I tell him the kid was carrying it when he died. The a-hole straight up asked if I knew where it ended up. Sorry, teacher. I didn't think to call and ask his grieving mother if she happens to know where the homework of her not-even-buried-yet son is. Like, that's on anyone's priority list. A-hole. Story 8. This country has a couple long weekends, but the students want to get a couple more days off on top of it. So on, like, Tuesdays and Wednesdays before the holiday, I start getting messages about people's dead grandmothers. It's never the grandfather. How many effing grannies are dying out there? I'm going to start asking for a picture of the body. Story 9. Not a teacher, and I actually finished my homework. I was in fourth grade, and we were doing a spring cleaning and emptying our binders of anything from the previous unit. I guess I was going too slow, because my teacher just grabbed my binder and shook all of its contents out into the garbage, including my homework. I told my mom what happened, and she told me to just be upfront about it and to not worry. The next day, I went up to my teacher. Instead of collecting our work, she would have us bring it to her, and the conversation went something like this. Where's your homework? You threw it out. I threw it out? Um, yes. She didn't speak to me after that. Story 10. Not a teacher, but one of my classmates tried. I was mugged on the way to school, and they took my bag with all my homework in it. What's that on your shoulder? It appears to be my bag, sir. Detention! Story 11. This is a little off topic, but the question reminded me of this. Back in second grade in the mid-80s for me, I had a mean teacher. One time, I didn't do my homework. She asked why, and I told her I didn't feel like doing it because I had a headache from listening to her talk all day. She gave me a paddling, which was the norm back then. She then asked me if I was going to start doing my homework. I told her no because my butt hurts now. I'm going to have to tend to that when I get home instead of doing homework. It was worth it because it made the class laugh. Oh, do I miss the good old days of being able to do stuff like that in class, and it's like if you weren't afraid of catching the paddle, you could essentially say or do whatever you wanted. You know, it's like the old school pranksters that you see in the movies. Good times. Good times. Story 12. This is legit and too ridiculous to be a lie. This was from a parent at the Catholic high school where I taught at the time. Paraphrasing because I can't find the original which I kept. Please excuse the late homework. Our pet cat defecated on it. And yes, defecated was the word they used. So this story actually reminds me of something that I myself had to once deal with. So once upon a time, I did a little bit of dabbling in teaching. And one day I was collecting homework and a student actually informed me that their cat had peed all over it. So naturally I'm thinking, okay, this is just some sort of BS excuse, but it turns out that the kid actually brought the homework in his bag with him and just wanted to see if I was going to call him out on it or not. So he ended up handing me like these, they had been dried off, but at one point they were clearly pea-soaked sheets. And I, I don't even know how to explain it. You could just kind of tell by the color and the smell that it wasn't human pee. Like the kid was actually telling the truth. So I actually ended up taking a picture of the sheet. I didn't want to take it and add it to the stack of you know forms that I had already collected. And then I ended up grading the picture, similar to one of the stories that we've already read today. And he ended up getting full marks on his cat pee homework. Story 13. Had a student get badly injured in a terrible car crash. She had to have surgery on her face. Most of us excused her from finals. Some idiot teachers made her come in. Her face was all swollen and her mouth was hanging like she'd had a stroke because she hadn't had the surgery yet. I told her that her surgery was her final for anatomy since she was learning more about practical application of anatomy than I could teach in class. Now, this is a fine sentiment. You obviously, you don't want to punish the child in this situation, but too soon. Too soon, teach. Like, she hasn't even had the surgery yet terribly injured in a car crash and you're kind of making light of it yeah like at least wait for her to get better before saying yeah i gave you an a because you know you learned anatomy the the real way story 14 not a teacher story so my friend had forgotten to do the homework over the weekend so he told our math teacher some bullcrap excuse of going bungee jumping our teacher joked that she needed proof since she knew he was lying so that night he sent me pictures of his face and i put it onto some gopro footage i found on youtube originally i tried to make 
it look good, but we thought it would be funnier if it was really crap. So the next morning we show it to her in class and she, being the good sport, laughed and excused him from the homework since he put such effort into avoid doing it. Edit. Added a bit of detail. Story 15. Not a teacher, but... I had a classmate who was blind and had a seeing eye dog. One day he told the teacher that his dog ate his homework. He did homework through some braille device thingy, and his dog looked genuinely guilty. She said, that's not good enough, and the dog promptly vomited up paper with typing on it all over the floor. He got a very quiet sorry and was never asked for his homework in that class for the rest of the year. Story 16. Not a teacher, but happened in my class. Student was constantly late to first period. Also, hardly ever brought in his homework. One day, teacher asked him why he was late and why no homework. My sister burned down the house this morning. Everyone laughed. The kid got up and left. Turns out his sister did burn down the house. Left her curling iron on some paper or something. Story 17. Another one of those not a teacher, but... In 6th grade English class, we had to do a listening exercise with a CD. I didn't have a CD player, but I had a PS2. But the PS2 couldn't read the disc, so I told that to my teacher and she didn't believe me, and tried to prove me wrong by putting the CD into the CD player they have at school. She said, see, the CD does work. I said, I never said the CD doesn't work. I said my PS2 can't read the CD. People laughed at me. I hated that time of my life. Story 18. I don't know if ridiculous, but a classmate of mine changed his profile picture on Facebook with a candle on black background, signifying death of a family member, with the caption, We will miss you, Aunt Laura. Hundreds of people offered their condolences. I messaged him asking what happened, and he said it was faked just so our professor would give him a week of extra time to, quote, mourn because he hasn't finished an important project yet. Two months in and the teacher still hasn't found him out on it. Story 19. I broke my back. As she walked towards my desk, I believe she was going to give a different excuse or at least mention a different body part, but the panic overwhelmed her and she went with her back. Both sadly and hilariously, I couldn't help but give her a are you dumb face? Story 20. Not a teacher, but an excuse. I used to have this little Jack Russell named Rocky that would eat absolutely everything it came across. One evening, he was chilling out on the couch next to me while I was going over an English essay I'd spent hours writing in my workbook. I get up to go to the bathroom, leaving my book on the couch. I get a bit sidetracked, make some food, and come back to find my essay covered in dog chunder soaked all the way through, with a random bolt amongst the mess with no way to salvage it. Next day, teacher asks me where my essay is. I tell her my dog ate a bolt and threw up on it. I get kicked out of the lesson for being ridiculous. Life can be tough. So if there's one thing that I've kind of picked up on through these first several stories, it's truly hit or miss with the teachers, whether or not they find humor in your story, whether they believe you or not. It's truly just luck of the draw that even if you're telling the truth, teachers got to buy into it or at least appreciate the attempt. Story 21. Not a teacher, but when I was in school, my elderly geography teacher told us about a boy he went to school with. He didn't do his homework one day, and his excuse was, the sow gave birth last night. Their teacher wouldn't hear it and caned him for not doing his homework. The next day, the boy's father came in in a rage to tell off the teacher. Turns out the boy was a farm kid and one of their pigs went into labor and had struggled to give birth that night, so the whole family had to get involved. The teacher was really embarrassed and had to apologize to the kid. Turns out she didn't believe him because she didn't know that Sal was what you call a female pig. That kid never had to give another excuse to that teacher for not doing his homework for the rest of the year. Story 22. A friend of mine had a dog that tore her homework to pieces. Our teacher only spoke English, which is not our first language, and my friend didn't know how to say tear apart in English, so she instead said my dog ate it. He laughed and didn't believe her. We had never heard the cliche phrase before. I think it's an English thing, so it was all very confusing. Story 23. (laughs) Haha, this brings back some memories. Not a teacher. This was a close friend of mine. My mom chucked it in the bin. Basically, her mom is obsessed with cleaning. She hated the slightest bit of clutter. My friend had done her homework and must not have tidied it away clearly enough for her mother, so she threw it away. She only realized the next morning. There, she was telling the teacher in class, what could he do? Yell at her mom and give her detention? The parent was involved in the excuse. He was visibly annoyed, but she got off no problems. In case anyone is in dire need of a get-out-of-homework card that guarantees no consequences, here it is. Story 24. A student nonchalantly told me he didn't finish his essay as he was just so busy that weekend because his dad died. 
My gut told me he was bullcrapping me, but I played along, expressing my condolences, and he told him to take as long as he needed. After class, I called his mom and told her I was so sorry for her loss. What a horrible tragedy for her family, etc. And mom was like, wait, what? What are you talking about? I recount to mom how her son told me about how his dad died this weekend, and mom is like, no he didn't. Why would my son say such a horrible thing? Then I played dumb and say in a shocked tone, do you think it's because his essay was due today and he wanted to get out of it? No, he could never do such a thing. Mom said not to worry, that she would handle it. The next morning, the kid handed in his essay and asked if I knew all along. I gave him a dramatic, why, I never, and we both laughed. He ended up with an A as he was a competent writer. Story 25. Obligatory not a teacher. But one of my classmates came with an elaborate story of how he couldn't do his homework because his dad had to leave that night because he was being deployed overseas and that it was short notice, so a lot of helping and packing and blah 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 other stuff had to be done. The dude had it done so well that not only did he manage to waste 10 minutes of the lesson, but also convinced the teacher enough to even get a thank you to your father for his service to the country. Towards the end of the period, the kid gets a call to the office that his dad is here to pick him up for a doctor's appointment. He had to do the homework five times for lying. It was a long-ass homework. Story 27. Happened just a few days ago. Student told me the work is too difficult for him to do. The work in question? Handwriting practice exercise. Edit to add. Should have been more detailed. This kid has no difficulty finishing the handwriting practice exercise, and he has pretty good handwriting. He finished it in five minutes after I told him to complete it in class. He has this habit of saying that the work is too difficult for him to do when he did not finish his work, and this behavior is consistent across subjects. Story 28. Not ridiculous, but true and unusual. During the final I gave to my English students at Vermilion Community College in 1994, LA, Minnesota, a student showed up 30 minutes late for the final, huffing and with camo splattered in blood. Mr. X, I just got my buck about a mile from campus and it's out there freshly dressed but not safe. Can I retake the... Go, go, I replied. Congrats. Meat waits for no man, but a final exam, devoid of blood and viscera, will be waiting for you. Bring me some meat. And off he went among a smattering of laughter. And I got a few pounds of ground venison, which were delicious. Story 29. Your usual not a teacher, but... A guy I know in one of my classes in college finished his work and printed out a 12-page thesis paper that was due the next morning with no excuses. He used a printer from the library. Our class was so early that our school's library was still closed for another hour. He was in culinary. This is important. He came in the next morning, ripped slash crumpled up paper in hand. His excuse was, his monkey ate his homework. He never mentioned having an exotic pet before after knowing him almost a year, so we, the class, called his bluff. He had baked a loaf of banana bread and accidentally left it in his pack along with his classwork. He had a pet monkey that, of course, smelled the treat, ate the bread, and ruined his work in the process. He took a video of himself stating the time and date of that morning before flipping the camera and showing the monkey having itself a great time shredding the papers. We all watched it on the main screen, had an amazing laugh, and the teacher gave him a two-hour extension so he could reprint the paper. For those curious, we lived in a state where it's illegal to own a pet monkey unless you move from another previous state with proper documentation. Yes, he had correct paperwork. It was a capuchin monkey named Baby Girl. Story 30. Different story, but I have a ridiculous excuse for my high school chemistry teacher not accepting my homework slash assignment. She never updated our grades online until maybe two to three weeks before the final. Then I noticed I had a zero on something that was about 3% of our grade, which was weird because I did all the assignments, to my knowledge. It was some lab assignment, and I looked at the date and was thinking, hmm, why wouldn't I have done this assignment? Then I realized it was the day I was getting my driver's license, so I wasn't in class. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll just talk to her tomorrow and she'll take it off because clearly I wasn't there. Nope. Instead, she tries to claim that I'm just trying to weasel my way out of the assignment. I'm like, bro, I literally have proof I wasn't here. Look at my license. So she's like, okay, fine. How about you redo the assignment on your own? And if you get an A on the final, I'll give you credit for it. 
I'm like, okay, whatever. I get an A on the final. Still have a B in the class, so I'm like, hmm, maybe she forgot? So I asked her, and she's like, no, I remembered. I graded your assignment. Here it is. I look, and she had given me 6 out of 20, then cut it in half to 3 out of 20 for being late. And the points she took off weren't even for wrong answers. The one thing I distinctly remember being docked for was multiplying 6 times 7 equals 42, but not, quote, showing my work for the multiplication. I was never the type to tell my parents about a teacher being a dickhead, but this was ridiculous. So I tell my parents, and we end up having to meet with the teacher and the principal, and the principal basically just says he can't make a teacher change a grade. What was worse is that it was only the first semester, so I still had a whole nother semester with her, which was miserable and awkward. See, this I don't understand. Teacher just flat out being evil for no reason. I feel like these are like the former students that were bullied and stuffed in the lockers as kids, and now they're kind of getting their cathartic release by being a grown-up and them being the mean bullies now. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible for the teacher to pull that garbage. And OP, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Story 31. Not my story, but a good friend of mine's. He got hit by a car on his bicycle when he was 13, broke a dozen bones, and was in a wheelchair for three months, plates and wrists, the whole nine yards. Fast forward four years, we were seniors in high school. Who else but the guy who hit him years ago was our history teacher. He didn't do a final report. His excuse? I have a plate and four screws in my wrist from being hit by a car. I couldn't type for that long. I forgot a free pass. Story 32. Not a teacher anymore, but I had a student tell me at the beginning of class, Mr. Neo Condiment? I didn't finish my homework last night on account of five of my family members got blowed up when their house exploded. Also, my cousin got shot and killed. Did you hear about the shooting at X yesterday? That was my cousin. None of this happened, of course, which I confirmed by offering my sympathies to her mother when she came to pick her up. I mean, why did she kill the cousin, too? Leave some family members around, Olivia. You may need another excuse tomorrow. SMH. Story 33. Not quite homework, but the most ridiculous excuse for behavior I've ever heard came yesterday. Kid types, female dogs, in chat and claims that he did it by accident because he was trying to answer the question we asked and was starting with the word witch. This is doubly ridiculous because we weren't answering in the Zoom chat. We had a separate web app he had been answering all the previous questions in successfully for the first 35 minutes of class. I pulled him into a one-on-one -on -one breakout room and he doubled down on the lie rather than owning up to it. Story 34. Not a teacher, but one of my classmates in fifth grade came to school with a cast and said his homework wasn't done because he broke his arm and was at the hospital all night. He actually broke his dominant arm and she told him that that was no excuse for not completing his homework. Story 35. Geez, off the top of my head, there was the time one of my 12th graders didn't have a big paper he needed to submit. Rather than embarrass him, I took him aside later in the class and asked him why he didn't have it. He was the type of kid who usually did all of his work on time. He got weirdly shifty, so I took him outside and was just like, what's the deal? And he goes, well, like, um, you always say to just be honest, right? Like, no guilt trips? So I, um, yeah, I lost my virginity last night and passed out at her house, and I wasn't allowed to be there but we both fell asleep, and her dad chased me out today, and my backpack is actually still there now. I couldn't decide if this was a weird adolescent humble brag or weird adolescent candor. Either way, he sounded honest to me. I told him to just let me know when he got his stuff back and we'd sort it out. Story 36. Not a teacher, but the student. The saddest part of this story is 100% facts. So last year I worked three weeks on this one assignment, so I went to go get myself some coffee. I DK how, but the dog got in my room. I came back from the kitchen seeing my dog tear up my assignment to get my cookies that was under my book. The next day it had to be handed in. So picture this. A ninth grade teen, five foot eight, had to stand in front of my entire class and tell the teacher that the dog ate my homework. I explained what happened. I told him directly, Sir, please, this is real. I am speaking the truth. Do you really think me, a ninth grader, would tell you that is a lie? I would rather have told you that I knocked over a candle by accident. He laughed. 
My class laughed, and I went to go get a smoke at break time. My group still has not let me live it down. Story 37. Similar story. In 6th grade social studies, we had to make primitive tools, aka everyone made weapons because it was the 1999-2000 school year. I made a short spear using a rock and a stick. You weren't supposed to use modern materials, but my dad helped me and had me tape the rock in place. Anyway, day to turn the men comes, and the teacher's out that day. Fine. We throw all our weapons in a pile in the corner of the classroom, and we'll present tomorrow. Tomorrow comes, and our teacher's pissed at the class. See, the corner we threw our weapons was also home to a trash can. The janitor assumed our weapons were junk and trashed them. The majority of the class had to explain what their weapon was in great detail. Story 38. This is the moment I lost faith in my students. I'm an English teacher from Venezuela. I used to work at an institute where many teachers were about the same age as the students, 19 to 25 years old, so it was common to get acquainted to some of them. Once I had this female student who was friends with another girl I knew, but I noticed from the beginning that the girl didn't want to do anything in class despite my best efforts. At the time, I was inexperienced and thought, maybe I should talk to her friend to get her to do more in class and help her out. The last day of class comes, and I see the student coming to me with her mom, and suddenly the mom tells me that she knows I've been harassing her daughter and telling her she was going to fail. It turns out that our mutual friend had made it seem like I was threatening to fail the student if she didn't go out with me or something like that. That was the moment I decided not to trust any of my students and took me a while to trust again. Story 39. Funny related story. I have a sister who's a couple years younger. She ended up having some of the same teachers I'd had, some of whom I had stayed in contact with afterwards. Well, and I was in high school. I ran into my former teacher, her teacher at the time. She mentioned that she got a good book report from my sister on a book that was fairly obscure. So obscure, in fact, that the only time the teacher had ever seen somebody read that book was when I had read it. She then told me to tell my sister that if she was going to steal my work, she should make sure to change the date on it too. Story 40. I had a math workbook that was basically all of our assignments and homework throughout the whole year. We would do the assignments and turn in the workbooks to be graded and get them back. I hated math. I went on a camping trip with the Boy Scouts after we finished all the work in that stupid workbook for the year, and I gleefully tossed my completed workbook into a fire, let it burn up for a few seconds, then fished its charred remains out before it was completely destroyed, stuck it in a Ziploc bag as some kind of keepsake. Anyway, we get back to school on Monday for the last week before summer break, and the math teacher announces that we all need to turn in our completed workbooks for a final grade on them. My classmates who were on the camping trip with me immediately looked at me, because they knew what happened to my workbook. Anyway, I ended up handing the teacher the clear plastic bag with the still identifiable remains of my workbook. I probably explained that I hadn't known we would need to turn it in again. I don't remember what specifically happened with it, but I didn't get in trouble. Story 41. I went to the Ren Fair with a campus activities group at my college. It was the day before I had a creative writing assignment due, but I was pretty close to done, and we were supposed to be back by 7 p.m. Plenty of time to finish. Or, you know, it would have been had our bus not gotten struck by lightning. We were about two hours from campus, so the replacement showed up at 7 and we all got home after 9. I emailed the professor and asked if I could have an extension and thankfully he said yes. Story 42. My son couldn't hand his homework in because a duck flew into our kitchen, panicked and landed on the kitchen table. Despite her panic, the duck spotted some Rice Krispies and started to eat them out of the bowl, splashing milk and cereal all over the homework. Then the duck grabbed the homework page, I presume because it was covered in cereal, and flew off with it. Not sure if the teacher ever believed us. Story 43. I had a student whose father was a professional soccer player. Wonderful child. Family, and the dad was very pleasant and picked up his kids from school any chance he could. The child didn't finish their homework because their father was playing in the Champions League, and they decided at the last minute to go watch the game, which is in a different country. The child was gone for two school days. They wrote a wonderful story about going to watch the game for a personal recount writing project, though. The homework was a choice activity on the current social studies unit at the time, so not a big deal, and they made it up in following weeks. But the child was only eight. Story 44. I was the source of one of these. 
When I was an infant, I went to live with my aunt and uncle for a couple months. Apparently, their youngest left her homework a little too close to me. She got to go into school and explain to the disbelieving teacher that her baby cousin had eaten her homework. According to the legend, the teacher reprimanded her for being irresponsible, then asked how long I had been living with them, to which she burst into tears and said, <laughs> Two days! Story 45. Parents may not know that the most common excuse is them. Kids love to blame their parents for not making them do it, parents being too busy to remind them, or parents not allowing any time for it to be done after school, or parents just not wanting their kid to do it. While each of these but the last one can be credible, busy lives get in the way, etc., I always make it a rule in my middle school classroom that kids are not allowed to blame their parents because homework is the responsibility of the student, not the parent. That's tough when K-2 through students who can't reliably read instructions themselves yet actually do not get help from anyone after school. Then you have to stretch the homework expectations a bit because you can't fault a child for not being able to read the directions on their own. Story 46. In February 2001, my dad was going through college. He missed an important test and told the professor that he had just had his first child, a daughter, and that his house burned down on the same night. The professor thought it was utter bullcrap until he saw it in the newspaper. I'm the daughter. It didn't happen in my memory. Obviously, I had just been born. So it's not a thing I think about often. But it's weird knowing my first home burned down the night I was born. Apparently, they had a pretty sweet nursery set up for me, as well as a sizable library and a garden. But instead, I spent my first few weeks in a motel. We'd also lost two cats. Incidentally, this year, on my 19th birthday, my college had a small fire in one of the building's basements, so I joked about how the universe likes to get me fire for my birthday. Story 47. I had this lady in my class who was always turning things late, missing classes, underperforming in general. She said she had a very demanding job. She was older, so I thought I would cut her some slack. My coworkers appeared to be very strict with her. At the beginning, I was uncomfortable with that, but she had so many piling excuses. Like, I had this work thing, and then I got sick, and my mother died from the same sickness this week. No joke, she killed her parents three times that semester. The last straw was when she told me she had written in exams and doctors, and her grandma dying for that day. Then I saw her Facebook pictures by the beach. She was telling me all this in the Facebook chat. Needless to say, I didn't fall for it anymore. Didn't fall for it anymore. Why did you fall for it at all in the first place? You just admitted that you realized that she killed off the same family members three times over. These lies aren't even believable. Moving on. Story 48. Not a teacher that accepts homework, but I remember once my parents coming home from conferences for my sister pissed off. You know, the times them just walking in the door throws off an air of, I think I'll go to my room now feelings. Yeah, this was one of those times. Turns out, all my sister's teachers said she never turned in homework, but my parents knew she did it every night. They go to her locker, open it up, and out falls an, their words, not mine, avalanche of completed homework papers. She was doing them and not turning them in. Story 49. Not a teacher. Had a run-in with a TA in a chemistry class. Had a very long lab going on for a microchemistry class. Was in the final stages of a multi-week experiment and had my samples in a hot water bath. There were five glass vials with precipit in them, all boiling for several hours. For some reason, my TA decided to take a look at one of the vials. She grabbed the small glass vial from the boiling water and was shocked to learn the glass was hot. She flung the vial halfway across the room as it burned her fingers. The vial shattered and the sample was lost. I asked her what she expected to happen and she wandered off to take care of her burnt fingers. Completed my lab work, noted one sample was destroyed during the process. She took 20% off the top of the grade for only having four or five samples. Had to go to the professor and explain what happened. She denied the whole thing, but he remembered seeing her with burnt fingers. Fun times. Story 50. The teacher was checking homeworks, coming towards me desk by desk. I started to panic. This was a foreign language course, and I was a fourth grader. The teacher looked at the empty desk, then me, and asked why. I mumbled, I couldn't figure out what to do. The teacher replied sarcastically, Oh, so there wasn't anyone at home to ask, huh? I replied, Sorry, Mum. Story 51. I'm not a teacher, but I went to a tiny, crappy private school. I graduated with seven people, married one of them, and the school shut down the year after we graduated. My principal was also our SS teacher and a pastor, and he was constantly a mess, and half our classes ended up sitting there listening to Rush Limbaugh on the radio. 
Two different times, he asked where my report was a few days after it was due, and I hadn't done it, but I told him I left it on his desk, so he assumed he lost it and I got an A. I also had a different Spanish teacher for all three years I was there, so I got away with turning in the exact same report every year. Story 52. Well, not a teacher, but when I was in the 10th grade, my cat peed on my assignment. I asked for an extension, because as those of you who own cats may know, Cat urine smells really bad. Teacher said she could put my reason in the top 10 worst reasons she'd ever heard. Then called my mom and made her bring in my assignment. Stank. She put it with all the other assignments and put it on her desk. Smell caught on to bits of the many, many papers and books on her desk, and it didn't stop smelling for quite a while. Needless to say, she wasn't a very good person and gave me bad grades all year for something that wasn't even my fault. Story 53. An international student from Saudi Arabia said he couldn't complete his English essay, which they had four weeks to complete, because of his chlamydia. I assumed he said the wrong word, but no, no, he meant the STD. I told him it wasn't a valid medical excuse. He brought in a doctor's note to excuse the assignment, but it literally was just the doctor's description of his ailment including lovely words like dripping. He ultimately took the issue to the chairperson of the English department, a sweet little woman pushing 70. She laughed at him and agreed that no work done over four weeks is not excused by a drippy dong. Last I spoke to the student, he went on a rant about how he got it from an American girl and how disgusting Americans are. When questioned if he had notified her of his diagnosis, he told me he couldn't because he didn't know which girl it had been or the names of most of them. So yeah, dude, definitely the ugly Americans problem. Definitely. Story 54. Not a teacher, but back when I was in high school, there was a teacher who was notoriously bad with technology slash understanding some basic things. One student didn't finish a very important paper before the due date, but instead of handing in nothing, he printed out three pages, all that said printing error 4089 in 72 point font in the center of the page. He told the teacher that he wrote the paper, but his printer was malfunctioning and only printing printing error 4089. The teacher believed him and asked him to email her the paper when he got home. But when he got home, he sent her an email of three pages that said email error 6268. The kid got an extra week to finish his paper until his computer started working again. Story 55. An online course at university. Student turned in a very bad, unfinished assignment. Gave her an F, which is unusual as usually you give some credit if you do something. But this was just incomprehensible writing that had nothing to do with anything. Totally unfinished at best. She gets back to me to complain. I explain why the assignment was so bad. She replies, but I don't see why I should be punished. I'm paying someone else to take this class for me. It's not my bad work. Congratulations. Now you flunk the class and earn yourself an all-expense-paid visit to academic probation. Story 56. This actually happened on Wednesday. I teach theater and have gone the virtual theater route due to COVID-19. So all of my students are actors and some are writers, makeup artists and editors too. A student of mine is homeschooled and proudly announced he got the day off. As the teacher, my first question was, so when did you finish editing the Halloween pranks video? He responded with, I haven't had any time. Towards the end of the class, I told him he needed to finish the edits and send me the video. He again responded with, if I have time, I don't think I will. Um, okay. Then all of a sudden, a chat popped up and he asked the class, me included, after class, do you guys want to play Among Us? Insert jaw drop here. You do realize that was a virtual slap in the face, right, kiddo? Motivating these kids virtually has not been easy. Story 57. I'm sorry my paper is late. I was shot. This has happened twice in my teaching career. Each time I was shown the bullet holes, and in one of the cases, some powder burns on a few finger stumps as well. The student had grabbed the muzzle of a gun in self-defense, and her assailant pulled the trigger, blowing off a few of her fingers. Story 58. Not a teacher. In the first year of high school, I had an English teacher who made an announcement before giving a homework assignment. This report on the book we have been reading is due in a week. If you do not hand in the report, you will fail and have to go to summer school. Well, I didn't do it. She collected them all, and the following day, she got up in the front of the class and said, Will the following students see me after class about not turning in the report? That one dude you know. Will those students please see me after class? Thank you. 
All eyes went to me. I didn't care, shrugged it off, and went to see my teacher after class when everyone else had left. That one dude you know, why did you not turn in the report after I warned you would fail this class if you didn't? You know you'll have to go to summer school now, right? Yes, but I can do no work now, or for the rest of the school year, and make it up completely in summer school and get an A in three weeks' time. Plus, I don't have anything going on during the summer and wanted something to do. Get out of my classroom. I then breezed through summer school without issue and got my A, which replaced the D slash F I got at the end of the year. I sometimes wonder what my teacher thought of me. Kids at home that are watching this or reading this, don't, don't do this. This is a stupid, awful idea. Do not take an example from this guy. Moving on. Story 59. I had to give a homework in the morning, but when I opened my school bag, I realized that it was in my brother's one. Not because I picked his by accident, but because he took mine an hour earlier when he left without paying attention. I didn't pay attention either, because I never thought my brother could be so dumb. We both had red school bags. So, when I told the teacher that my little bro had stole my homework, everyone was laughing at me, even the teacher. So, I showed her what was in the bag, which was an agenda. She let me give her the homework the other day, but I could see she was mad and she was finding me kind of sus. Story 60. I was an instructor in the Air Force. Not exactly the same, but one airman came to me on a Monday after not finishing his weekend homework. His excuse was embarrassing enough that I gave him a pass and let him finish it at lunch. He had been stationed here long enough to have liberty on the weekend, but they didn't have cars and had to take the bus anywhere they wanted to go. Downtown, mall, etc. He took the correct bus to get to the beach slash casino area, Biloxi, Mississippi. Had a nice dinner, a few drinks, he was 21, and then hopped back on the bus to head back to base. He may have had a buzz because he hopped on the wrong bus, realized it after about 30 minutes, hopped off, and then transferred onto a new bus, which he didn't realize was a Greyhound bus. The driver, seeing his military ID, didn't check for a ticket, and he fell asleep on the bus. He ended up in Fort Worth, Texas, which was eight hours away from where we were stationed in Mississippi. He spent the rest of the weekend getting back to Mississippi just in time to go to bed Sunday night. Before you ask, he showed me all his tickets and pictures on his phone of him breaking down in Fort Worth. It was then that I told him maybe the army was more his speed. Story 61. Not me, but GF is a teacher in a poor city with some decent gang activity. One student handed in their homework with burn marks all around it. The kid said that SWAT had kicked down the doors and threw in flashbangs, which is what burnt the homework. His dad had apparently robbed a gas station and the cops thought he went to baby mama's house. GF didn't believe it until she talked to the local officer who confirmed the story. Kid got an A for the day. Story 62. When I was in high school, the kid who we will call Elliot never handed in a scrap of homework. I was in every class he was in until I left in fifth year. As you can imagine, they got more and more creative as the years went on. One time, I remember he said he had been mugged and his school bag stolen. Naturally, the school called the police, who were not entirely shocked to find his stolen school bag in his locker. Story 63. This story is actually from when I was a student with a ridiculous, but actually true, excuse. My high school served breakfast before first period. I was squatting down at my locker, grabbing all my books for my first few periods. Someone was standing way too close to me, and when I stood up, my shoulder hit their breakfast plate. Everything fell on me, including their maple syrup. Their syrup got everywhere and somehow managed to seal my backpack zipper shut. I had all of my friends try to rip it open. We even tried cutting it open with scissors, but nothing worked. I had to tell my first three teachers that my homework was in my bag, but I physically couldn't get to it. None believed me until I showed them my backpack. Also helped that my hair was sticky with syrup. (laughs) Haha. Story 64. Not a teacher and not related to homework, but I have a story that is just nuts. I grew up in a small city that was kind of bad 20 years ago, and now it's one of Boston's most expensive suburbs. Anyways, my middle school had metal detectors and some kids had brought in guns, knives, etc. I always got searched. Not sure why, I was the shrimp and the nerd, and always came out clean. Well, one day, I was peeling an orange before heading out to school, walking in a snowstorm, such was tradition, and I put the knife on the edge of the kitchen counter, which I could barely reach. Well, the knife fell inside my backpack. Swear to God. This was a regular adult-sized all-purpose knife, but pretty big for a fifth grader. So at that moment in the space-time continuum, I realized that all those stories about a dog eating a kid's homework and a kid bringing a gun to class and saying it fell in by accident could have at least a shred of truth to them. 
I obviously took the knife out and put it in the sink this time, and walked to school, paranoid as F, as to what consequences I could have encountered. Some background as to why a fifth grader is peeling oranges with knives. Where I was born, it was rather normal to see five-year-olds cutting grass with machetes and chopping wood with axes, so cutting food with knives was peanuts compared to the things we were allowed to use. Life was so harsh that I had to cook my own meals at five years old because nobody was home and kids get hungry, you know? I'm talking basic crap like boiling eggs, cooking beans, frying eggs, cutting up plantains and green bananas, then deep frying them. To be honest today that I think I would never let my three-year-old near a knife, but holy crap, I was using knives and machetes since I could remember, and I remember the first time I learned to poop in an outhouse and not in my diapers. Anyways, all that crap was just normal, but to this day, I wonder how big of an ass-whooping that was normal back then to Spanish parents. I'm talking prisoner of war type beatings, no remorse. I would have gotten if I had accidentally brought that knife to school that day, and it would have truly been an accident. I kind of wonder why my bag was unzipped. Why did I take it off? Oh right, those fifth grade biology books were heavy as F, but... I don't remember why it was open. Moral of the story is that if a kid gives you an unbelievable excuse, do consider that by some astronomical odds, he might be telling the truth. Story 65. Not a teacher, but I remember a level 2 drawing class from college I was in. We were assigned a semester-long project. A life-size self-portrait. Any medium. We're at the last days of class in the student gallery handing our work in, displaying it for a student show. Kid shows up with nothing and says someone stole his drawing out of his car the day before. Right. Story 66. One time, my baby brother threw away my homework folder. He was just learning a mixture of walking and that some things go in the trash, so he threw my folder right in. Our mom found it later that week when she was taking out the trash and saw it in the big can outside. Toddlers are crapheads. Oh, and I also had a friend actually get their homework eaten by their dog once. It was a really small school, so the teacher knew their mom and had confirmed it with her, so everyone got a good laugh about it. Story 67. Last year, I would only get about 10 to 15% of students actually doing the homework on a good day, so I rarely gave it since it was pointless. My administration didn't like this, and I was told I had to assign homework every day. Of the 10 or so students out of 100 who regularly turned in their homework, one came to class without it one day. I asked them where the homework was, and with a completely straight face, they pulled out a potato, set it in front of me, and informed me they were very busy taking care of their new pet. I confiscated the potato, which they had found in the gym. Apparently, somebody had left a bucket of potatoes sitting near the stage. I told them to do their homework and called the number for their parent that I knew didn't have a VM set up. I knew they were working and would not answer this number because I was required to call home for forgotten homework. Imagine 90 calls every day, and I couldn't imagine explaining the potato. Story 68. One of my IT teachers got the excuse that the student had tried to email an assignment in, but it didn't go through. He then had the audacity to say it must have been the school's fault. It turns out this teacher was the person in charge of the IT department. He was also an ex-Special Forces Marine, just to tell you the kind of man he was and maybe help you imagine the coldness of the smile he gave the kid. In his 30s, but in that moment a kid. Our teacher literally walked us all through the exact process to check the records, and not only what emails were sent, but which ones failed to send, and what was in drafts, etc. All from his personal computer, all in about three minutes. I shuddered a little when he said, I respect you less than I already didn't. Blow smoke at me again, and you won't have to worry about your grades for the rest of this semester. Story 69. Not a teacher, but I have a related story and nowhere else to tell it. When I was a senior in high school, 17 to 18 for non-Americans, I did mostly online school at home, but attended my neighborhood high school for journalism in a theater set building class called Stagecraft. My stagecraft career was a crabby old man who begrudgingly acknowledged that I was one of very few students who didn't think of stagecraft as a blow-off class. He often gave me important jobs that he wouldn't trust to lazier people in the class. Around the middle of the year, during the final days of rehearsal of our main show of the year, I had to take a week off of school in order to have a circumcision, for medical reasons. My mother emailed my stagecraft teacher to inform him I was having surgery and would miss a week. He was forced to do several key projects by himself. 
and by the end of my week off, he was irate at my absence, assuming I had milked a minor dental procedure to get out of school. On Monday of the next week, after taking attendance, he asked very loudly in front of the full class, So, fear kills the mind, 1312? What surgery was so serious that you couldn't attend class and tech rehearsals? I responded, Well, I had to get circumcised. He went scarlet stammered something about how I could have said it quieter and didn't bring it up again. Story 70. Okay, so I'm not a teacher, but I'm sure my grade 5 teacher would comment this if she saw it. So back in grade 5, we had a husky at my home named Loki. Lovely doggo, all in all. But this little crap decided he would pee all over my homework in my room while I was taking a bathroom break the night before class. I had to bring in a note from my mom, who has the exact same handwriting as me, stating our dog peed all over my homework and I'd need replacement worksheets slash cheat sheets. My teacher didn't believe it, so I brought the dried, pee-stained homework in after I went home for my lunch break. She never apologized, but instantly threw out the paper and gave me new stuff. Story 71. Was a student, not a teacher. Had a coursework for geography when I was about 13. Big project, so took weeks to finish. The week it was due in was the same day my father was going to Africa for a dig. He's an archaeologist. I had done all of the work on his laptop and done a final proofread the previous night. I left the coursework on top of his laptop, planning to grab it in the morning. Woke up and he'd left at 3 a.m. to get his flight, with his laptop and my printed out coursework. By the time we were able to get a hold of him on the telephone, he was in the arse end of nowhere with no internet, etc. This was before 4G, so couldn't email me the coursework. I was known for being badly organized, so that morning when my teacher had been collecting the coursework from us all, she had got to me with a, here we go, what's the F up gonna be this time, expression, only to be answered with, my coursework is in Africa. My mom had given me a note, but my teacher didn't believe me and thought I had forged the note. So I sat in the head teacher's office for a few hours until they were able to get through to her and confirm that yes, I had done the work and it was in Africa for the next fortnight and no, dad wasn't able to email it over. Story 72. I was the student here. One time, my grandpa was in town, and he really loved golf and liked playing with my dad. He and my dad picked me and my sister up after school and immediately drove to the nicest golf course in town. We stayed at that golf course from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 9 o'clock at night. My dad made my sister and I go to bed as soon as we got home, so I wasn't able to do my homework assignment. When I told my teacher the next day, she thought I was lying because who would spend six hours at a golf course with two children under the age of 12? Story 73. I'm going to share what I posted to the subreddit teachers a few days ago. I messaged a parent saying that his son was missing work for my class. I always let them know if they need help, they can contact me. I've met with the kid for one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings to remediate him. This is what the parent said to me. You see, the frustrating thing about this virtual learning stuff is that my son will tell me he's done the work, but then you teachers will email me and say he's missing something or whatever. But when I try to make him do the work, he'll just talk back to me, so I'll let him do it on his own, but then stuff won't get done. Your excuse for your son not doing work is that he will talk back to you when you tell him to do the work? Story 74. Not a teacher, was a student. My backpack was on the mudroom floor, where I had left it in my haste to get outside to play when I got home from school. Well, my dog decided to lift his leg on my backpack, soaking it and the contents inside, which included my reading workbook. My mom put the workbook in a Ziploc baggie for me to show my teacher. I remember standing in front of my third grade class, holding the edge of Ziploc with the yellowed, wet workbook, crying, My dog peed on my homework! Story 75. Student here, was 14 at the time. My rabbit genuinely ate my homework, left on the coffee table, chewed straight through four pages. Took the remains in and told him what happened. They accepted it with great reservations, but as I was an A student, left it. They brought it up at parents' meeting and were shocked when my mom backed me up and said, Yeah, the rabbit's a little bugger for paperwork. Story 76. Okay, nothing wild and not a teacher, I know, I know, but it's somewhat worth it and really relates. But in year five, I went in early because my dog legitimately chewed my homework. When I got in, my teacher, my Italian teacher, and another teacher that knew me well were all talking, and I go in to tell them what happened. Obviously, they don't believe me. Come on, Dan, you're smarter and more creative than this. And so I will out the shreds of my homework, and they all look a bit shocked that it finally happened, and said, Well, if you were able to bring it in, there's no excuse not to hand it in. Story 77. 
Not exactly, but here's my story. I had given the assignment about four weeks in advance. In a class of about 70 students, 80% of the students apparently forgot about the assignment, a simple enough assignment to draw their dream house. So I decided to be a bit creative in the punishment part. So I told the class that I'm going to ask each one their excuse for not doing the assignment. But the catch was that once told, the excuse cannot be repeated. I don't care if you invent an excuse. Students started with having no stationery, to broken hands, to dog stealing homework, and all the others. The last student was thinking for a long time, as most of the excuses had been used. He then stood up, stared long at me, and said, I designed and drew the house plan. Then I decided to show it to my girlfriend. She hated the house, so she tore it up. Class was already laughing through all the excuses, but this let out my grin too. Story 78. Not a teacher, but I did use this true story on my teacher, and I got suspended for two weeks because of it. I was 15 in my house one day, playing with my friend. Little did I know that my friend opened my backpack and my hamster cage. I had three hamsters, Sonya, Johnny Cage, and Liu Kang. All three ended up dead in my backpack, guts everywhere, all over my homework. I went to school the next day bagless with a note. My parents provided proof of the incident, but yet the two-week suspension was upheld. Story 79. Not a huge one, but pretty ridiculous to me. Almost two decades ago, I was innovative for allowing high school students to email me their reports slash essays instead of requiring printed copies. One student submitted a Word file the night before a long one was due, and the conversation went like this. Me. Hey, I opened your Word doc just fine, but it's completely empty. Did you send the wrong one? Student. What? No. I wrote 2K words over the past month. Did you delete it? Me. Me? Sorry, but no. It was empty from the first time I opened it. Student. Oh, it must have been my dumb little sister. She hates me, so I bet she deleted everything in that file. Can I please have another week? Me. You've been working on this all month, right? Student. Of course. Me. This file? Student. Yes, that's the one. Me. Okay, let's right-click, check properties. Huh. It says here you created this file last night at 2 a.m. and last modified it at 2.10 a.m. Let me guess. You waited until the last minute to even read the instructions, realized it was way too much to do at 2 a.m., so you submitted a blank doc, hoping I would believe your story about your sister. Am I right? Student. Glares and busted student. Me. You have tonight. See you tomorrow. Story 80. Oh boy. I was the student. My dogs decided to eat my school folder. It had one piece of paper in it. My math homework. The only reason the excuse was actually accepted was because my mom was also a teacher at the school. My teacher got so mad she didn't let me into class until she called my mom to tell her that her son was lying. She came back and let me know when my mom informed her that, in fact, my dog had actually eaten my homework. Story 81. Not a teacher, but in high school I didn't write this research paper because I was a crap student, and I knew I was out of excuses, so I smashed this already broken jump drive and put it at the bottom of my bag. When it came time to turn them in, I was like, oh, I gotta print mine out and pulled out this broken jump drive with a look of shock on my face. My teacher tried to get our computer teacher to fix it, but it was too far gone, so I got another day to write it. One of my proudest and most shameful moments, TBH.